Now, one of our problems is we have a time inconsistency and we're always like, and I'm guilty too. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to diet next week because that you don't think in terms of things being finite. There's always time for that. I'm going to be disciplined in my trades next week. I just feel like firing off this little day trade right now. I'm going to do it anyway, right? Even though I know I shouldn't like Paul. A time in inconsistency is where you're looking for an immediate gratification versus a long-term goal. And this trading that we do, especially with this swing to intermediate term trend following, it is a long-term goal type of thing. It's not a way to produce income. By the way, there's no way to produce income in the markets. Write that down. D, what do we sell options? Well, you can sell options and that'll work until it don't. Eventually you'll blow up, okay? What about mean reversion? Well, that'll work until it don't too. But before I digress too far, a time inconsistency is that we're looking for that immediate gratification and we forget about the long-term goal. I mean, I'm thinking about doing something very challenging when I'm 60 years old and it'll probably take a year or two of training to get there. And it's like, I need to commit to that. So I'll start working out towards that goal. But if you don't, you know, a lot of times I'm like, eh, you know what? I'm not gonna go to gym because I've got other things going on. I'm kind of busy. And I'll get to the gym tomorrow, or I'm going to work out really hard next week. Now, the immediate gratification does pay off right away. What's the, the old saying? Procrastination. Um, uh, I wish I can remember how it's said, but basically that procrastin procrastination pays off right away. And all this other stuff might pay off over time, but that immediate gratification is right there. It's tangible, and it can be rewarding. But it does come, obviously, with a long-term cost. Now, the I tried to explain this before, and this is in pretty much every one of those behavioral science books, and that's one thing that I hate, again, is that they all start to sound the same after a while. But it does help sometimes to hear things again. So let me try to see if I can get this right. I'm going to offer you $500 in debt today or $500 tomorrow. Which one would you take? Well just to save time most people would take five hundred dollars today and i probably would too okay or what if i offered you five hundred dollars a year from now or five hundred and five dollars one year plus one day well most people would opt for the five hundred five dollars what's an extra day right well if you look at the math of this it's the same it's five dollars one extra day but this is just a part that this is just a point about a very simple experiment to show that we have this time inconsistency. There's a lot of modern society pressures on us now. I mean, it's ridiculous. It's like I refuse to answer a text while driving, and I try not to answer the phone, but I'm guilty of doing that, so maybe that's just as bad. And I try not to make too many phone calls, but that's probably just as bad too. So I am, I'm not holier than thou, okay? I'm just saying I'm trying to get better with that. But the reason we have these modern society pressures is my wife expects an immediate answer. Well, I might be in traffic, I might be driving, and I should not, and neither should you, obviously answer that cell phone. But there's a lot of other society pressures out there. And as I've said quite often, and I try not to let these guys get under my skin, but right when I think I'm getting better, <laughs> right when I think I'm getting better, they pull me back in. <laughs> There's an ad out there right now, which I, I think this guy should be shot. I know you can't say that. I don't know. Oh, Dave, you can't say that. People should get shot. I know. You can't say that nowadays, but he should get shot. <laughs> You know, they show a guy that's all depressed. It's like, oh, depressed because you have a lot of debt. You know, it's like, what? What are they doing? You know, this poor bastard. And basically they're saying that if you sign up for this guru's trading service or whatever, hey, don't you have one? Hey, just wait a minute. Let me get to my point. That all your debt's going to go away. Well, what's going to happen is, this poor bastard's going to whip out a credit card and get further to debt, okay, and more depressed. 
And I can all but guarantee you he's not going to make any money. In fact, all you need to do is do a little Google on these guys and you'll find out quite a bit. Okay. All right. I'm off the high horse. Like was said earlier, your willpower gets used up. Your patience gets used up too. And one thing I've been thinking about a lot lately is the monetary and mental pressure. The mental pressure, monetary pressure is really bad, but mental pressure, I think, could even be worse. So what's that? Well, let's take a look at that. Well, you're always going to have a monetary pressure. And I think that's one thing that I woke up a few mornings ago and I wrote that down. And that's something to always remember. And that's something that you can wrap your head around. You're always going to have bills. Okay. Something's always going to break. Your car is going to break. Your microwave is going to suck and be too slow. And you want a faster microwave. Okay. So there's always going to be bills. There's always going to be things happening. I, you know, I have a, I like money, right? And uh, I think the reason you and I get along so well is you like money too. Like they said, and what was that? Idiosyncrasy, mediocrity, mediocrity or idiocrity, whatever that movie was. It was a pretty bad movie, but it had its moments. Anyway, there's always going to be needs for money. And, and I'm, I'm fascinated with very successful people. I want to learn from them. I want to learn, you know, whenever my wife says, it tells me about somebody she met through a business or whatever that was very wealthy. And I'm like, how did he make his money? How does she make her money? What does she do? You know, what can I learn from them? You know? And the other thing I like, which would having money would help, is I'd like to sail off, sail off in the sunset one day. Of course, better make sure I have a good uh, satellite uh, computer there because I'm, I'm not sure I could walk away from trading. But anyway, so I do occasionally watch some of these YouTube videos and these people are on these million dollar and half million dollar catamarans sailing around the world. I'm like, how do they make their money? How do they make their money? So I've, one of them was like, how we got enough money to buy a catamaran? I'm like, all right, so I clicked on that, you know, 30 seconds in the video, they said, well, we don't have kids. I was like, okay, that's all I need to know. <laughs> so you people who have kids, you could agree with me. Just one kid, not just the cost of one kid. I don't know the exact costs or the estimates, whatever, but it's probably about a half a million dollars. And I don't think I'm that far off. Now, I don't want to talk you out of not having kids because they're wonderful. No, they're not. Uh, no, they, they're great. No, they're not. Uh, no, I love my kids sometimes. But just, <laughs> just the cost of one kid could have bought you a very nice boat. But anyway, before I digress too far, I guess the point I'm trying to get to there is that if you have a family, your financial needs are really, really huge. It's amazing how much money you have while you're single. Not that you should not be married and settle down because it's been a wonderful thing for me. I would probably still be an egotistical little shit. Oh, I guess just demonetize my video. Oh, well. <laughs> Had I not had my wife, Marcy, to kind of ground me when I get a little too full of myself and so on and so forth. So it's overall, it's a good thing. I don't want to sound like I'm being negative but it's expensive and you're going to have a lot of expenses. So you have to embrace and accept that. You can't expect the market to pay for anything. Anytime I really get creamed is when I expect the market to pay for something and I try to force that to happen. And I'm guilty as charged. I talked about that a lot last year with all these stupid appliances I had to build and another $25,000 to move the garage 15 feet back and, you know, if you've ever built a house, you know it's ridiculous. And we try to keep it under control, try being the key word in that sense. But what's amazing is not that you don't always need money, and we'll talk out of both sides of my mouth, but when you feel like you're kind of on even keel with everything, it's like that's when you occasionally hit it out of the park and do incredibly well. And that's when you have to take that little bit from that outlier or whatever and pay off some bills or go out and, and Treat yourself to something that you've been wanting. A little bit, a little bit of reward for your hard work. But you can't expect the market to pay for anything, at least not on your immediate time frame. Livermore said many of people have grown, gone broke trying to pay for a necklace or whatever the case may be. It doesn't work that way. That's not how it works, Beatrice. That's not how any of this works. Now, your mental pressure is something I've been thinking about quite a bit. Could be even worse. 
and something wrong will occasionally go wrong in your life and you could look to the markets to try to make up for that let's say you have a fight with your spouse or a significant other or both well, I, I need to stop making that joke <laughs> my russian friend dave i am concerned about you you talk about your spouse and significant other are you and marcy okay it's like no no, no we're fine we're fine and then as lr thomas and many other people have said but i'll give her credit don't expect trading to fill a hole in your life and by the way there's always going to be a hole and that hole moves there's always going to be some problems in your life that will spill over into your trading and guess what your trading will spill over into your life 